Three, two, one. All right. Welcome back to Football Theory. We uh, uh, we got the Liga MX coming back. That, I think that kind of snuck up on me. My, I think I'm, uh, technically kind of started last week with the Copa de Campeones uh, game between Leon and Cruz Azul, kind of the community. That was a good game. Field, that was a good game. Style of game. Uh, mm-hmm. Great game. Uh, talking about fans showing up in LA. Big fan. Two great fan bases in Cruz Azul and Leon, and both of them showed up. Cruz Azul takes a 2-1. You know, kind of community shield match uh, kind of vibes, or that's the way I view it. But it sets up perfectly to get us into Liga MX, where, you know, where do we begin? I mean, you know, we can make a whole episode about Liga MX, but we're just going to try to touch on some things, you know. Yeah, we, just, we can just run it down. I guess you could talk about a couple of things. I think the biggest thing, I'm, we didn't see a lot of big signings this summer, uh, which is kind of like weird. But I guess you could think, you know, people, clubs are struggling, you know, financially. The pandemic, I mean, they're just happy with what they got right now. I don't think they're trying to make crazy moves or sign some whatever. Um, so that being said, uh, I'm still excited to have the Liga Mexicans back. I know they just changed the name to, uh, uh, was it um, Grita Grita Mexico? Mexico? Yeah, Grita Mexico, um, which which is cool because I was getting, I didn't understand Guardianes. I, I mean, I didn't, I was getting stuck with that one, but uh, I guess they're just trying to give cool names. I guess they're, try, they're really trying to get people to get away from yelling and chanting the homophobic slur. So they're, I guess they're trying to people say, you know, Grita Mexico, I guess. Um, so, no, but I'm excited. Liga Mekis, um, you know, turn on on Friday, get a couple games here and there, Saturdays, Sundays, a couple games. I mean, the cool thing is there's always a game on. And so I'm excited for that three-day three day weekends all the time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think there's some really interesting things to look at. You have Cruz Azul now coming off pressure-free. They won the title. Um, I think there's they still bring back a good squad. I think they're going to be set up real nicely. You have Tigres now. What are we going to see from Tigres now that Tuca's gone and a more offensive coach like like Miguel Herrera is in, is, uh, oh. in the fold? I think yeah. we've yeah. wanted to see Tigres play more offensively. I think Herrera's going to give them that. And I, and now there's going to be even more eyes on this team, which I think is crazy considering what they've accomplished the last decade. And I think they're going to – I think Herrera's going to – value that pressure i think the team's gonna value that pressure and it'll be interesting to see especially because they kind of underachieved last season under tuca's last season yeah tuca taking a project in juarez which surprised everybody yeah what was that about man yeah no you have uh leon you have leon coming back strong i think as well um you have two teams i think in pumas and chivas when we talk about the big teams in mexico who are kind of i think set up to struggle this season again uh, when you talk about teams not making signings and not making moves, I think, I think unfortunately for you, Chivas is right there for that. <laughs> I think was the teachers want is close to the chopping block right away. And why um, even bring them in? What the heck? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mont- Monterrey is gonna Monterrey also you know right also a team right in the thick of things. So you know there's a lot to look forward to when you look to, look look at these storylines for Liga MX. It's, it's very NFL like where there's a parity in the league. Right. There's an opera. I mean, there are obviously some teams that are way better than others. But the cool thing with being a Liga Mekis fan is you know there's going to be a new champion this season. You know, and obviously Cruz Azul could could be could, could they could repeat, but it's not going to be boring where they just beat everyone, you know, and that's what makes us like our league. It makes me love the league, is that that your team has an opportunity from week one. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, she wasn't inside anyone, but you never know what could happen. Or Atlas could, you know, somehow have a 99 year 99 run, whatever. Okay, which is not gonna happen. But you know, it's exciting because every game matters, right? One game at a time. You only play a team once. There's no home and away. There's none of that stuff. And we know they're playing for uh, the Ligia. And so the, the only bad part about Liga Mekis is obviously the fact that a lot of players are out. You know, there's a lot of players playing the Copa Oro for other teams as well. Um, there was guys that are playing in the Olympics, you know. So, and even Tigres has their best, their best two players are in the Olympics, right? And it's not, you know, counting anyone that plays for Mexico. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see how they do with that. I think Diga is going to have a more exciting game, you know, style of game um, or game style, whatever you want to call it. Um, Bumas has to bounce back. They've been rough, you know, just talking about being tight on the money. I always make fun of my Bumas fans, uh, friends, um, you know, just like the signings they get are just, they're off, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm really excited. I think Cruz Azul is going to take the season again. I really feel like, we messed up as a league to let them win because they're always invest. They always have a, a deep roster. And now that they got that, you know, monkey off their back, you can see two, three titles in the next three, four years. That's what I think. 
Yeah, you, the, you know, you look at, we haven't even mentioned Club America yet, who I think is going to be even more solid than they were last year, who, were, who I thought, who, you know, who were the second best team, third best team in the uh, league last year. Um, I think they're going to be just right back in there. I think, you know, we talk about the structure of the league. The good thing about the 17, about the 17 league season is, or the two short seasons is that, you know, you are able to, it's exciting, right? Um, a lot of things can happen. Unfortunately, on the negative side, it doesn't allow for long projects a lot of the times because you get coaches get the axe kind of quickly. Teams are on shorter leeches. Things can turn around quickly as well, which is which are the things. Um, but again, this season is going uh, 12 teams enter top four, get a bye. Top eight go to a one off playoff or five through 12 go through a one off playoff. Right. Well, at first, I didn't like this idea because I thought too many teams get in, you know, not enough value in the season. But now I kind of view it as it makes the top four more important because that Goodbye. yeah that five through eight, you know, it's it's one game. And if it's 90 second, 90 minutes, it's PKs. So you that's you're walking a very fine line at that point. If you're one of the five through eight, if one of those teams that aren't able to get into the, the top four and kind of, you know, over two legs, things kind of tend to even themselves out more over just 90 minutes, one game straight to PKs if it's tied. Yeah, and I think that's definitely the knock on the Liga Mekis is the fact that you can't make, like you said, you can't have a project. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a team like Chivas should be um, with the new idea, like, okay, we're going to go, you know, Cantera only, 70-30. Okay, that's where you could do that, in, like, in a long season. But in the short season, it's really hard, and especially with a coach like Bucetich, who's going for the win, who needs a win. You know, so he's not going to spend his time trying to help this 19-year-old figure it out, right? Yeah. He's going to keep putting Molina in there. He's going to keep Brizuela on the outside. You know, he's just going to go for the guys that, you know what? Development's cool, but I just need to win today. You know, let's develop maybe in the uh, under 20. So yeah, that's what knocks. And, that, and that's most of the team has to do that. And that's the knock. Definitely. Yeah. It's the same, you know, it's the same kind of idea with Pumas who have that same similar tradition or style of them where Atlas, Atlas as well, you know, let's fill it up. I mean, those two have had more success than Atlas, unfortunately for me, but yes, you know, you're talking about all the teams have had more success. Except well, you're talking about a team <laughs> Atlas, yeah, whose nickname is La Academia, the La Academia, you know, the Academy of Mexico where, you know, these short terms kind of make it harder for them to really give players, even though they still do a very good job of having a lot of young Mexicans on the roster, playing a lot of young Mexicans. You know, last year I thought they were, they kind of fumbled the last game against Puebla in the knockout stages where they could have made a semifinals, but, you know, they didn't, but they get back in these things. But teams like Pumas, teams like Chivas, where you, I think the fan base would love or be would be okay with struggling a little bit for a year or two. If yeah. they have the basis of these young guys, of playing these guys, giving them the opportunity to kind of grow and then finding players to kind of just fill in the gaps. And, you know, you know, a team that actually does that pretty well is Globe America. They do actually do a pretty good job of getting players in, giving them opportunities and then buying players that just fill in spaces instead of it being kind of, you know, Whatever. Yeah. Bunch and then fill in the other way. They kind of actually do a good job of filling in with what they have from the, from their academy and then finding players to plug in, which is kind of impressive. Well, I'm never going to give that team props, but yeah, whatever you say, man, I, I'm with you, but I'm never going to do it. But yeah, no, I do. I do see what you're saying. I do think it's all over the place. I think the problem with like my team or even Atlas, cause I, you know, I'm not a huge Atlas hater. I do like to see them do well. I grew up, you know, loving a lot of the players they, they did have. They did come out of their academies, you know, Osvaldo Sanchez, you know, Pablo Pardo, Daniel Mexico, Sorno, Mexico Rafa captains, Marquez, you know. you know. The only captains coming out of Mexico since 2002. Jared Borghetti, you know, guys that came out of there where you're like, okay, those are my dudes. So I do I do respect the development part of that. Um, I do think teams make the mistake and they're like, oh, let's win now. And so they go buy three or four foreigners that aren't up to par. They get a coach that's not into it, whatever it may be. So there's all kinds of messes going on. But I do think the Liga Mekis is going to start making changes. Obviously, they have the that stupid Leagues Cup they just started. Um, they got Copa Mekis they need to, you know, bring back, uh, get going again. So with those different tournaments, the idea is that they have more opportunities for the young guys to play, you know, because you're hoping that Copa champions, right, different little things. I guess they were saying their goal is to have all 17 teams playing an international tournament, right? That's their goal, to have them all playing. So you have the guys yeah, in Copa, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got guys playing League Cup, you got guys playing in some other Bologna they Cup they're going to make up. I think they might bring back the, – they're in talks to come back in the Libertadores as well, so – after what happened yesterday with Boca? 
Yeah. <laughs> people are acting like that's new. Like, oh, you see how Boca's acting? Like, wait a minute, you mean the, where their head coach spit on Bofo's face and nothing yeah. happened to him? Like, you act like we, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. That's a whole other episode, but we'll see about that. Yeah, but, you know, I think um, there is something that the league can do to get better. You know, unfortunately, they're never going to go back to a whole uh, year, to a whole season. Uh, 34. There's just too much money to be made in these two short tournaments, especially it's once fun. you get Especially yeah. once you get into the playoffs and the in crown two titles, you know, it makes it interesting because you never know what can happen. You know, um, teams that are traditionally been really well are a little bit not transition, but we'll see. You know, we're going to see something new from Tigres that we haven't seen in a while. You know, what I mean, it's going to be fun to see that they're going to be successful. I mean, Piojo's a you I don't like it. I'm not. I don't like him either. I'm 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 not really. Full, I'm not a huge like Piojo fan, but he's a successful coach. He knows how to win games. We have a team like Santos who uh, talk about a team that has a project and kind of knows what they're doing. Um, and under the radar of the bigger teams, you know, they were uh, fi- or semi semifinalist finalist uh, last season too. And they've con- continuously have been right in the thick of things. So it's, you know, and when you, ha- the other thing, you have those goods, you also have kind of like the bad of it. You have Nick Aksa who um, struggled last season. You have, you know, Tijuana who's, Kind of trying to figure themselves out again. Querétaro looks like they're gonna be in the probably one of the bottom teams as well. You know how can they get out of it? How can you know? What I mean, especially after a, a year where there was not a lot of money going around and these teams are struggling. What can you? What what do we? What do we expect from teams like that? I don't know. You know, we're we're gonna see. I, I'm I'm excited to see. Uh, I'm excited just to get this started, get it going, get see some games going, uh, get the guys back in there playing, and then you know see. It's going to be fun because now it's qualifier time. So now you have guys like Roger Martinez, guys that play in South America, the guys that play in CONCACAF. And so they're going to be, you know, being called to the national teams on these breaks, you know? So you're going to have these guys kind of being overworked a little bit, but also the pressure is going to be on. Like Funes Mori can't have a season where he scores two, three goals because then, then Tata can't call him anymore. You know, he's going to have to be stepping it up. And Funes Mori is going to have to go back to scoring eight, nine goals, you know, whatever it may be. So it's going to be fun. I, I got... Cruz Azul is champion, um, and I have a uh, shoot. Let's just in the final. I don't even know how the bracket is going to end up, but we'll just we'll just put Tigres in the final. Uh, I have Atlas winning, and uh, oh, <laughs> I, um, you know, as much as I wish, I think I think they'll have. I think they'll be good. I think they'll be in the thick of things. I think you know they're uh, they're they found a little consistency last season. I hope that continues. I see them kind of being that uh, six, seven, eight spot. But I like uh, I don't know for storyline purposes. I like a good Club America Tigres final uh, right now. Yeah, Piojo. You know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, skill wise, obviously, I mean, obviously, talent wise, those are the top three teams right there. We just named them Club Azul and those two other teams. And you know, obviously, you could put in like you said, Santos has done really well. Um, the Lucas always Pachuca. strong. The Lucas always strong. Pachuca, you know. Pachuca's cool. You know, we'll see. But I, I'm gonna go out there and just say Club Azul. And it's always one of these things too, where like um, very, very few of the teams are consistently strong all the way through from beginning to end. Usually you get one or two, three teams who kind of take a, take the lead in the front. And then the rest is kind of this continuous battle because you kind of, you know, teams start off hot, cool down, teams will cool down, get hot. So the you know, consistency sometimes isn't there. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, another, I think Leon is also going to be right up there. You know, in the, the last Nacho, I think, they don't have a great opportunity well, from what we saw from them on Saturday. They're going to be right in the thick of things as well. So, you know, yeah. a lot of good quality, good good 10 teams from 1 to 10 who are going to be right in the thick of things and feel confident. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But, you know, that's why we got this league. And it's, you know, it's our little it's our little league in Mexico around compared to the world where there's some really great things and sometimes not some good things. But that's the fun thing about it. We get to see it pan out in this manner. Yeah, I'm excited. We'll see. Um, so let's go, uh, Liga Mekis, and uh, hopefully they can continue to have a strong league. And and uh, it's gonna be a lot of soccer this this week, starting tonight, right? We gotta stay up late, watch Mexico, Francia, and then this weekend watch Copa Oro, and obviously at the same time Liga Mekis. So it should be good.